Hello, everyone, and welcome. I am Omari Martin, board chair of Kepler College of the Astrological Arts and Sciences, and I welcome you to another interview for our Black History Month series. And we have Marie O'Neill with us. And Marie is the founder of Padme Life Coaching, located in Santa Rosa, California. Marie has many years of experience as a life coach, astrologer, speaker coach, past life regression facilitator, healing retreat facilitator, and lecturer. She is a distinguished Toastmaster through Toastmasters International, is on the board of directors with TEDx Sonoma County, and is an astrologer teacher with the Forest Center for Evolutionary Astrology. In addition, Marie lectures at numerous astrology conferences and has added published author to her list of achievements with her book, And the Lotus Open, a memoir. Marie's passion is helping others achieve their dreams, goals, and to shine brightly in the world. Thank you, Marie. We appreciate that you took a few time, took some time to join us today. Thank you. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank <laughs> you for inviting me. You are welcome, my dear. You are certainly welcome. So let's get started. I want to ask a few questions, and I'll start with, how did you get started as an astrologer? Oh, my goodness, Omari. That's, a, that's an interesting question. <laughs> back, way back in 2002, I had just moved to a small town in Washington State called Squim, Washington. It just so happens I was at the grocery store, and the oh where was i i was in one of the what do you call it the meat counter mm -hmm. there was another gentleman who was standing next to me waiting on the butcher and we struck up a conversation i am a gemini so we started talking <laughs> and turns out he was an astrologer mm -hmm. and i had i didn't know very much about astrology at the time but um we struck up a conversation. He wanted to start, start teaching me astrology. And I had previous actually to meeting him, I had met David Pond, okay. who was also, who is also an <laughs> astrologer up there. But, and he of course knew things about me that I had no clue how he knew. But when I met the second gentleman, that's when I actually started studying astrology. So that was back in 2002, and he taught me how to erect a chart by hand, which no one does anymore. But I yes. think it's important yeah. to, you know, to know how to do that. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yeah, it is. And so I just started, I started small, and I started going to, <clears throat> um, going to Norwalk, which back then Maggie Nobandian and Laura Nobandian and her brother were running Norwalk. So I started going to conferences. But anyway, that's getting ahead of myself. But that's pretty much how I started. <laughs> OK, OK, uh, got it. Thank you. And so <clears throat> you said um, the early, uh, early 2000s was mm -hmm. when you started. And how long have you been practicing astrology and in what cities? So you just identified a small town in Washington, and I think you've moved around a little bit over the years. I have. <laughs> I have studied in Squim, well, practiced in Squim, Washington. I started my practice in 2010, and that was by happenstance. I had not intended on becoming a professional astrologer when I started studying. My whole goal was to learn about me, to help me to, to heal and to release some of the things that I needed, psychological things that I needed to release. Mm -hmm. That's how I started. In 2010, I was called out, so to speak, <laughs> by another astrologer who knew I was an astrologer but looked at my at my website and didn't see astrology anywhere on it. So she asked, she said, so what's this about? Why aren't you, why don't you have astrology on your website? Well, I, the bottom line was <laughs> it was fear. 
because mm. fear of rejection, fear of how other people, what other people might think, you know, I, and so I didn't do it until 2010, but then I, I did. So I've practiced in Squim, Washington, and now I'm currently in Santa Rosa, California, and I practice here, mostly online. Okay, okay, fair enough, fair enough. And um, <clears throat> I can identify with that as well. Um, I um, It took a few years before I be, began to get comfortable with sharing with um, people, I'll just say it, in the African-American community that I was uh, an astrologer. And then as the years went by, you know, I'm a little deeper in, I'm a little deeper in. And right mm -hmm. now, baby, I'm on the deep end, deep. <laughs> so I just share it with people more freely now. And if they have an issue, it's their issue, mm -hmm. not mine. And um, mm -hmm. life goes on. So were you able to find access to courses when you were learning? And did you feel welcome in those courses as a Black woman? You know, when I first started, there weren't, there were some courses available. I learned mostly on my own and by going to conferences. Mm -hmm. I took the post-conference classes, the pre-conference classes. If someone had a seminar, I would do that. But back then, we really didn't have Zoom. We didn't right. have ways of studying <clears throat> with someone if it wasn't face-to-face -face or, right. yeah. you know, it just, it just wasn't wasn't there. Mm -hmm. So my main two instructors were David Pond and another gentleman who never went to a conference a day in his life. His name was Don Boone, and he was an old fashioned astrologer. You know, we forget that there are so many astrologers out here who do not go to conferences and yes. you you meet them and you you think, oh my God, why didn't you go to a conference? Well, no, that's not my world. I don't want to go there. I'm yeah. happy to just practice in my own little com in my own community. Mm -hmm. So I <laughs> never had a problem when I go to any of the uh, to David Pond or Don or any of the post conference uh, talks, the all day talks and things like that. I never had a problem. I did because I am a black female who typically ends up living in a community where I'm the only, or maybe <clears throat> there might be one or two others. Mm -hmm. I'm used to being the only <laughs> one in the room. Okay. And so it just, it, it doesn't bother me okay. like it would, it, it would someone who, is 100% in the black community, living in the black community all the time. Um, for me, since I was an adult, I've lived in Utah and Squim and, you know, been to Wyoming and in places where, <clears throat> you know, it, it's, it is what it is. Yeah, 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 got it, got it. Okay, um, who are your biggest inspirations in astrology? And were there accessible Black astrologer role models? Mm. Well, <laughs> my I have um, two mentors, two astrology mentors now. One is deceased, and that is Alan Oaken, who was my esoteric astrology mentor. I studied with him since 2013, and mm -hmm. he just just a wonderful, wonderful mentor. And Stephen Forrest, I have studied with Stephen since 2010. And now, of course, I'm teaching at his online, uh, online college. Mm -hmm. Both men have supported me 100% in my career, in my education. They were always there for me when I had personal questions, offering support, and it's just, it's been a wonderful relationship with both of them. I, I miss Alan a lot and uh, just, anyway, just hate that he's gone because that's such a, 
a bright star, a bright light that is no longer here. As far as um, black astrology mentors, I didn't have any because when I was coming along, there weren't any. You know, in the community that I lived in or uh, even going to Norwalk, um, I just, there just weren't any, any around. And, uh, you know, I was asked a whole lot of times, why aren't there more black people at these conferences? <laughs> okay, okay. So when you were asked that, how, how did you respond? What were your thoughts? What, 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 um, what was your answer? Well, you know, growing up in the Deep South, like I did, there was that issue of religion, you know, growing up Southern Baptist. And so, you know, there's, there's that issue of, you know, being in the black community in the black church, it's like, what, what are you, <laughs> <laughs> don't know, you bring that in this house, don't you? <laughs> mm -hmm. I know, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and we're, you know, it's changing, which is wonderful. But, but astrology was considered, even though they didn't know anything about it, it necessarily in the black community, it would be considered the work of the devil. Yes. So there was, <laughs> so you've got to be brave. Yes. To, you've got to be really brave to come out as a black astrologer. Yes, you, you do, especially when that influence of the, the Black church uh, mm -hmm. is a part of your life. And so while I was born in the North, uh, I spent a lot of time in the South growing up, uh, specifically mm. in Georgia, because that's mm -hmm. where my daddy's from. And um, my, my grandmother, I was in every vacation Bible school. It you was too. at her church. <laughs> Auntie Willie Pearl's church, Auntie Clara May's church, and her sister Willie Nail's church. And I was at every one. I'm like, oh, can I just get a break from oh. vacation Bible school? But I would never say it out loud. I thought no, you it, better, but you I would better never not. say it. You better you, you not. You couldn't say even it. you couldn't even think it too loud. <laughs> yeah, so I can identify. Um, with that experience, and I know exactly what you're saying and how the Black church has positioned or referred to astrology as the work of the devil. Wow. Um, yeah, so um, so it seems that you did not have, may not have had any support or little support from your family members and, and friends at that time. Right. As a matter of fact, I didn't tell anybody that I was studying. <laughs> okay. No, you, because there would be, I, I can picture this, because I, I still remember when I did tell one of my cousins, I can, the silence on the other end of the phone. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And, um, you know, oh, okay, okay. You know, and, and I managed to tell a cousin who was a more open-minded. Yeah. Let's yeah. just, let's just say that. Uh, my aunts never knew what I did, what I, you know, no, because they're just, they're steeped in the tradition. Yes. And so, um, yeah, so that affected the support. I got more support from my friends. Okay than I did family. <clears throat> okay, okay, all right. So um, earlier, a few moments ago, you did make a reference to, at times, being the only Black astrologer in the room mm -hmm. or in the class, and how, for you, you took that on as a normal and became, you know, used to it, you know, got used to it right. and became, became comfortable with that. And was there anything in particular that helped you feel more welcome and or what do you want people to know not to do? That's a very good question because I 
never felt uncomfortable because the people who were in the class and the people who were teaching the classes never radiated out to me any energy of being uncomfortable with me being there because I would pick that up yeah, if, yeah. if they if they <clears throat> radiated that out. And so, you know, I don't know if it's because astrology is Uranian, but, you know, it's pretty open to people, different colors, different, you know, just yes. different where yes. society would, would uh, be concerned. And I was always welcomed. I, I mean, I still remember the first time I met Laura Nelbandian. There was no problem. I mean, I am, I was a budding astrologer. I could ask her questions. I'd walk up to her some, because when I first started, I didn't know what the glyphs were. So, <laughs> you know, write the glyphs on my little, my little name badge and walk up to her, Laura, what does that mean? I'm a t- you know, Taurus Moon, <laughs> tell me about that, you know. And she was fine with explaining things to me. I've gone to, I went to astro- astrology at all, the bookstore that her mom yeah. Yeah, had. Yeah. And <clears throat> her mom was open. Um, I've taken classes there. I still have friends that I mm. met at astrology at all. So I was welcomed inside the family mm-hmm. so to speak the the family of astrology and i just i've never i know some people i'm sure have probably had issues um mm-hmm. but i haven't i in, don't know why but i just never did okay 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 cool cool um so what kinds of changes if any have you experienced in the course of your career in terms of feeling welcome in groups of different diversity and cultures? And so you kind of touched on that a little bit. So if you want to add some more details, uh, certainly feel free. Yeah, you know, um, I went to, you were talking earlier before the recording started about UAC, and I went to my first UAC in 2018, and I thought, holy moly. (laughs) This place, it, it's astrology on steroids, and I'm a, I'm a Gemini, but darn, I, I, mean, I don't know if I can deal with this. It was just so much information, so many people, so many tracks to choose from, and I still found, however, pods of people that you know, you could, I could get involved with. I didn't get involved with a whole bunch of different groups because I was there. I wasn't there by myself, but I'm not, mm-hmm. but I still had a small core group of people who we just hung out with. So I don't know if I'm answering your question, but you're, <laughs> that good, was, you're good, you're good, you're good. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was just, it was just, it was awesome. And there was, I didn't sense any animosity. Um, It was nice to see more black astrologers there. Mm -hmm. It was um, young black astrologers. And so for me, when I see another young black astrologer, I think, oh my God, you go, you rock it, you do it. Because, you know, the younger generation, they don't have the issues that say I had when, you know, when I came along, um, they're, ju- they're jumping in just like I did, but they more than likely have the support of family. The, you know, they don't have second thoughts about, mm-hmm. do I put myself out there or not? Yeah, you know, <laughs> they I don't think that's there for them. And so anyway, it was it's it's the astrology industry, I believe, is growing the you know, I think people are becoming more aware of it and and more interested in it. What I'm seeing is more blacks who are doing more online classes, more just being out there 
and being accepted for who they are. And I like that. I like that the fear isn't there, the concern about being possibly being rejected, which is something mm-hmm. that I certainly had to had to deal with. I mean, mm-hmm. it stopped me cold for uh, for a few years there. And I'm just not seeing that today. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, I can identify with that of a uh, local group here in Chicago, the Friends of Astrology at my first Friends of Astrology meeting. Uh, a brother sat close to the door. I didn't know. I didn't know because I'm yeah. thinking about my um, physical safety, not just some people don't want you in the room, but potential, um, yeah. you know, physical safety concerns. And you know, as as a black man, and so, um, but it, it, but like yourself, I didn't experience any of that. I was welcomed. I was embraced. And the race, the rest, um, the rest uh, is history. And I do want to say that it was at UAC 2018 when I first saw you yeah. and I didn't, you know, really make it a point to talk to you more and hang out with you. But just as you say that you are Gemini and it was astrology on steroids for you. Oh. So for those of us who have no Gemini in our chart, um, <laughs> it was, uh, you know, for, for myself as well. So certainly uh, the next time you and I are both at uh, an astrology conference, we'll meet for lunch, dinner, do something, hang out, whatever the case may be, or we can just chop it up a little bit. <laughs> oh, that would be that would be nice. And you know, I'm initially from Chicago. I didn't know that. Oh okay. yeah. Okay. All yeah, right. And You're home south girl. Side. Okay. South cool. side. You know. South yeah. side. South side. Yeah, South Side. Yeah, me too. I'm on the South Side as well. Yeah. Okay, excellent. South Side. That's how we <laughs> say it, everybody, when you're from here and the South Side. That other side of town, the West Side, that's oh, a different breed of That's folk. a different beast. That's a totally, I visit over there. I have. <laughs> well, it's like the West Side people don't visit the South Side. <laughs> so. uh, yeah, I don't, yeah. Um, yeah, we, we got something going on. Yeah, we do. <laughs> Oh, wow. Okay. <clears throat> now, culturally, have you noticed that African Americans tend to be more open or closed to astrology? And re- does religion play a part in that? So you spoke to that earlier, but that was then and this is now. So do you experience now that African American or Black astrologers are more open uh, to one another? I do believe Black astrologers are, of course, more open to one another now where the community at large is concerned, I think it's more open, but I think it's more open because, I mean, not necessarily in the older population, Mm -hmm. but definitely the younger population Mm -hmm. are open to it and seek it out. Okay. So there, there isn't, uh, there isn't a problem there. As a matter of fact, you, you, what I find is, uh, a lot of um, the population want to work with Black astrologers who actually understand the, you know, the issues of yes. being Black in America. Yes. And, um, or mm-hmm. being, you know, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, um, I, I agree with you on that point totally. And I think, um, representation matters and i think there are african americans who want to consult with the professional astrologer who looks like them Mm -hmm. um i would say that and so what message of inspiration would you like to share with new and upcoming astrologers of color wow know why you're doing it make sure that it is your passion when you do it because number one, it's a study that is ongoing. It's not something that you study for two, three, four, five years, even 10 years, and can consider yourself an expert. We are always learning. So make sure (laughs) that you continue being curious, make sure that you get a group of like-minded astrologers as your I want to call them 
your mastermind group, people who you can talk to about the subject. It doesn't have to be a whole bunch of people. It can be one, two, three other people so that you can help each other through this, um, through this maze. In addition to that, it's good to have a mentor. And I'm not talking about a mentor that who does your chart. I'm talking about an astrology mentor who's already gone before you, who knows the ropes, who can mentor you through the journey. And above all, you know, be kind to yourself. Don't underestimate yourself. Charge what you are worth. And which is really important and value yourself. Know that you are just as good as that other astrologer who you might be sitting next to. You might feel that you're not, but you are. You have something to offer. You are valued. You are of value and never underestimate yourself. Put yourself out there. When you think that you are not going big enough, go bigger. Go mm. as big as you can. Jump. An astrologer told me once, and this is specifically for females. I think it was David Pond who told me this. <clears throat> I asked him, I was at a conference, and I said, you know, I'm I'm pretty open. So I told went up to David and said, David, yo, there's, you know, I'm at this conference. I've been at these conferences and there's all these men up here talking. I think that's wonderful. However, where are the women? <clears throat> mm -hmm. And he said, Marie, <laughs> it has nothing to do with whether women or men, women are better than men or men are better than women. The thing is, men just jump. They just go for it. Mm -hmm. Women have to get all the ducks in a row, have to think that they know everything before they jump. Men mm -hmm. don't do that. They just jump. Ever since that conversation, let me tell you, I just jump. I just mm -hmm. jump. And don't worry about it. So if you're a female and you think you have to know everything before you jump in, you don't. Mm. Go ahead and jump in and learn as you go. Wow. Wow. Thank you for that message. I'm sure that there are um, young people in the astrology community and um, even those uh, in your peer group who appreciate uh, that message. Thank you for that. And what kinds of shifts in the astrological community do you think would improve opportunities for Black astrologers? Oh, my goodness. I think that the astrology community is moving in the right direction, of course, um, because I see Norwak and UWAC and um, I saw they seek out more <laughs> African-Americans for, uh, for presenting. And so is, as far as doing anything different, just keep going in the direction that we're going. Keep seeking out other uh, Black astrologers to speak, to promote. Um, you know, it's assumed sometimes that you have the support that you, you need. It's assumed that you have it but that's not necessarily the case. So when you see another black astrologer, regardless of your race, go talk to them, find out how they're doing, introduce them to other astrologers or, or of like-minded uh, people, take them to lunch, see how you can support them in the community. Um, it's, you know, it's important, I think, to mentor, uh, to show another person how they can make money doing this. So, you know, so anyway, that's, that's what I think 
um, we need to continue doing <clears throat> and add to, you know, what we're doing in the mm -hmm. astrology community. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for that. And I do want to just share um, with everyone that Kepler College does offer a diversity scholarship. Mm -hmm. And anyone who is a member of one of the historically underrepresented groups is welcome to apply for the diversity scholarship mm -hmm. here uh, at Kepler College. And um, certainly as the uh, months, days, and years go by, who knows, one day you may have an opportunity to teach at Kepler College. So mm -hmm. thank you for that, Marie. Um, and so I will ask, um, how do you celebrate Black History Month? Or do you do anything special? Well, I watch, I, I love Turner Classic Movies. So oh I end up watching a lot of Black movies on Turner Classic Movies during the month of February. And um, of course, doing uh, this interview today is another way. But um, yeah, that's pretty much what I do is watch it because I'm a movie buff. So oh, I watch okay. a lot of a lot of old <clears throat> movies and uh, I love I love that. Oh, that's cool. Well, I will. I just want to add um, I did look at uh, The Wiz uh, during Black History Month featuring uh, Michael Jackson, Diana Ross, uh, Richard Pryor, um, Nipsey Russell, and, uh, and oh. Lena Horne. Yeah. Ooh. So I looked at The Wiz during Black History Month. And of course, I've seen the movie before, yeah. but just to just be in that element and just to observe that work featuring a cast of uh, African Americans and at oh, the yeah. time A listers. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Now you know Melba Moore played Dorothy in, with on uh, on The Wiz. She came. They came to Chicago, as a matter of fact, and did the show. Um, I forgot which theater it was it was or where they did it, but the mm -hmm. whole show was done, the, the black cast, the Wiz, and Melba mm -hmm. Moore played the lead. She played Dorothy. Oh, I my. think that was in the 80s. I'm dating myself here. But <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, and she certainly has um, a powerhouse voice. Mm -hmm. I saw her on a documentary a few months ago. Mm -hmm. And um she can still hold that note. You know, she can <sighs> hold that note at the end of um, You'll Never Know What's on the Other Side of the Rainbow, that song. Oh, yeah. I'm not a singer, yeah. so I'm, I'm not yeah. going to demonstrate that today. Mm -hmm. and, uh, <laughs> just at the end of that song, she just holds that note. I want, I think it's for 26 seconds or Ooh. 30 seconds. I mean, she holds that yeah. note and yeah. just the power uh, she has as a singer. So I'm sure mm -hmm. that's a treat. But again, a few months ago, I saw her on a documentary and she could still hold the note. She still has the power. And I was wow. like, wow, just just great how she took care of um, her talent, her gift. Oh, yeah. Her yeah. Voice, so to hold it. Yeah. And so, um, OK, so what kinds of services are you providing right now for students and or for clients? Well, I teach, of course, with um, uh, the Stephen Forrest Evolutionary Astrology School, and I've been enjoying that. I am um, I do some one on one coaching with astrology students who need, uh, you know, who have a foundation, but maybe they haven't had practice with doing charts and they're a little bit afraid to actually do somebody's chart. So I, I walk them through, you know, we do practice and practice and practice. So I do that. I also, because I am uh, such a stage hound, I, uh, I teach through virtual healing retreats. I'm getting ready to do one now, actually, mm -hmm. and uh, in, a, in about a month. And I see clients one-on-one -on, -one on Zoom and teach at, give talks at the different conferences. Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. And so 
So tell us, Marie, how can people find you? Thank you. I can be found, uh, you can email me at marie at padmalifecoaching.com. You can find me on Facebook, on uh, LinkedIn. I'm on there, Padma Life Coaching. You can also check out my website, padmalifecoaching.com. These, and I have a book website, which is andthelotusopened.com. So there's, there's a myriad of ways to find me. <laughs> or you can call me. <laughs> okay. So are you, on, are you on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, yeah. any of I'm that? On, I'm on Facebook, Instagram. I'm on Twitter, but I'm not really on Twitter. <laughs> I have a I have a Twitter account. I do check it periodically, but I mostly check my Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn. Okay, I'm LinkedIn, on LinkedIn okay. too. LinkedIn. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Well, Marie, on behalf of the board of trustees, uh, Donna Young, the college president, and the other uh, college administrators, as well as our staff members and uh, faculty members and students. I say thank you. Thank you for making history doing Black History Month. And uh, until next time, we thank bid you, you farewell. Thank you very much, Omari. You're thank welcome, you. Marie. Take care. <laughs> you too. <laughs>